Hey guys, welcome to another video. Today we're working on this generator. I'm not sure what brand it is. It says 3000 on it, so I'm assuming it's 3000 peak watts. It's got a Honda clone engine on it. Yeah, doesn't run. Hasn't run in years. Uh, the pull cord is damaged. Uh, attempted uh, owner attempted to repair, but it's, it's just not working for him. So it's only got about a foot of actual pull, and this cord is actually quite large for the size of the machine. So we're going to be working on that, and once that's working, we'll get another carburetor and gas tank flushing, and we'll get it to run. So yeah, we're gonna have a look see and see what we can get done with her. I've already checked the oil, it's full. It's very, very black. <laughs> Needs an oil change bad. But uh, first things first, let's get that uh, recoil starter taken off of there and uh, put another cord in it. A little bit longer, a little bit thinner, so we get fit more on it. So I'm gonna spin you guys around. I'm just gonna pop that off, it's just three screws. Three uh, 516 screws, I'll pop it off, get you on the bench, and uh, we'll jump into it. All right, so I've got the unit off the machine, three screws, pops right off. I'm gonna check these, the starter dogs, make sure they're working. Yeah, so there's the dogs, they're working. They extend and retract just fine. This cord is pretty short, pretty thick. So we're just gonna change the cord out. Let me grab my knife. <clears throat> Looks like about a number six cord, so. We're gonna swap that out and put some five and a half on it. It doesn't need to be this thick. This is large. <laughs> put a cord on it that's that's too large. Yes, it's stronger, but well, that's all the cord we got there. Only a couple feet. Well, like I was saying, if you put a cord on there that's too big diameter, it uh, you can't fit enough on the spool. So that's that. I'm just gonna, there's a few different ways to do this. You'll see different videos on the internet about it, but I'm gonna do it this way today. Give a few wraps, tension that spring up. Shall record through here. Hopefully it decides to go in. Yeah, there we go. Well, yeah, okay. You can lock it, you can do all kinds of stuff here to hold that from turning on. I got enough fingers to do it, so. Let's put a knot in there. This is still pretty thick cord. I could probably get away with a number five. But, that's what I got. So, this is more designed for like bigger eight horse stuff. Snow blowers and such. There we go. Gonna let some cord pull in. I can actually see what I'm talking about. I can see the cord on the outside here. Get you an angle. Yeah, you can see the white cord. It's binding up on the starter housing. So let's see how much is in there. Not really a lot. It's not. I know you can't see it on camera, but it's all just stacking up in a roll in a row. It's not staggering, so it would actually get more in there if it would ever decide to go where it, there where it needs to go. That tells me this cord's too big, so I'm gonna swap it out. I don't have number five. I do have four and a half, so we're gonna put some four and a half in it. It's not a huge engine. It's a little guy, so. We'll just take this cord out. Take this one out and we'll put a four and a half in there. When we get more cord on it, on the spool. There we go. Let that go back where it's supposed to go. Oh, what's going on there? Oh, the little dog fell out. I'm gonna get a screwdriver and get that out. Hang on. Put that cord away. Where's our screwdriver? A 
The little dogs just travel in a slot on this cap, so. Get in your home. Here we go. Out, in, out, in. I think I actually hit it with my finger and pulled it out of its little spot there when the spring was twisting that pulley back on us. Out, in, out. Yeah, they're working all right. Let's get the other cord. Four and a half. Should be enough. It's just thinner. Again, we'll get a little preload on this. Burn the end here. We'll just melt it so it doesn't fray on us. Get her stuck in there. There's that. Put a little knot. That should be plenty strong for this little this little engine. Okay, I'm just gonna let the spring pull of whatever cord it wants in there now. Let's see. Well, that's quite a bit more cord in there. I've got about four feet, five feet of cord in there now. So at this point, the spring is completely relaxed. It's not pulling any tension on this. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull maybe five, six inches out. And this is where I'm gonna cut it. That way the spring is still under tension. So the handle will pull all the way up to the recoil and stay in position. I'm just going to mark that real quick here. Maybe. There we go. We'll get a little paint marker on it so I know where I'm going to cut it. Because <clears throat> I'm just going to put a quick little knot back here. To stop the recoil from pulling itself in while we're working on it. There we go. Now we can put our handle on. Let's cut that off. Come on, a little sharp knife here. Burn it. handle out of here. The old cord out. Put the cord through the handle. I did not leave my enough, myself enough room for working. Let's get this. Let's get this knot redone. Need a little more room a little more cord to work with okay pull her out there we go that should give us plenty of working room there we go shove her through Shove through this. There's all different kinds of handle designs. This one happens to have a little metal insert. <clears throat> Put another knot on the end here. That's what we got. Now we can get rid of this working knot. Maybe. Come on, fingers. <laughs> it's 
cold in the shop today. Fingers aren't liking it. Here we go. That out, that out. That should pull all the way in. That's what we want. Yeah, there's about five and a half, five feet of cord in it. That'll work perfect for this. Nice. Let's get our bolted back on the machine and then we'll spin around and get uh, looking at the carburetor. I'm gonna move you guys off to the side a little more so you get a better view. Whoa, not that close, jeez. Zoom me in. Let's get this guy put back on there. Well, that's much better. There we go. That'll work just fine. That's on, that's off. Okay, let's get the air filter cover off. I'm already assuming we're gonna have to take the carb off and clean it. So we'll get that out of the way. Little air filter. What's it look like in there? That doesn't look filthy up here. not too bad already looked in the tank the tank is disgusting it's like uh, gold syrup in there so I'm not sure how far we're gonna have to go with the tank so a little crank he's breather tube get that removed we're probably gonna end up with putting a spark plug in it it's probably original It's a champion, so it's probably not original. This would have had a torch or, I don't know, mega fire or something else in there. This looks like 10 millimeter nuts on the front of this. We'll get this out of the way so I can get a, a wrench onto the bowl. I'm not going to necessarily take everything apart yet. Um, I'll end up pulling the bowl first there's any junk in it because it could just be that there was no fuel in the in the bowl and it's it might be clean so we'll check that first 10 millimeter nuts two of them Holds the air box on possibly another yep another one down here three a little bolt Should be all. There's a metal reinforcement in here that's kind of stuck. Come on off of the studs. There we go. It's just very tight on the studs. That just gives us a little more room back under here at the carburetor bowl. Uh, of course, that's not going to fit. Well, let's see what happens. This is a drain, looks like. Oh, might not be. Don't know yet. Okay, there was something in there. Yep, old gas. Pretty yellow. Uh, grab my little cup here. See if we can save some of them drips. Very yellow. Yeah, that's just a drain. I don't know why they have a spring on it.
there's not enough fuel in the tank to actually submerge the on off valve yeah let that drip out for a sec I'm gonna turn on my ultrasonic cleaner and get it warming up right now <laughs> we're going to need it let's knock that bowl off of there Come on. Oh, crusty. Let me check, see if the needle's going up and down. Yep, needle's not stuck, so that's okay. But here's the, uh, here's the fuel we got out of her. That's pretty rank. Thick like syrup. We're gonna pull the carb off anyway, so that's where we're going with it. Yeah. So there's a little fuel line clip here. Let me get you out of that out of the way. No, oh, needle nose pliers. that off of there get our line wiggling yep if it tears it's fine I'll just put another line on it there it's moving that's off and the carb should slide off of there Hopefully it doesn't tear a gasket. A plastic spacer, that's not very good. Wow, that is tough to come off of there. The studs are not aligned very well. There we go. So there is a little damper spring, a little tiny damper spring. Remove that. Slide the Z bend off the governor arm. And there's a carburetor. It's very varnishy. Very varnishy. Gasket didn't tear, that's good. Oh, there's a fuel inlet hole right here. Get you a picture there. A little fuel inlet. Plug solid. So in the bowl, there you are. <laughs> in the bowl, the fuel level is up and it goes into this little removable piece. That's where the fuel goes in and then it goes up into the carburetor, into the engine. But that's plug solid, so it would have never run. Okay. Tear the carburetor apart. Get you over here. Down. Ish. Yeah, that's uh, that's pretty gross. Float pin. Only goes in one way. Float and needle. It's got rubber tip needle. <laughs> so I'm gonna look in the seat here for corrosion. Looks nice and shiny, so that's okay. Just gonna screwdriver, get those little jets out of there. that little plugged up one. Oh, plug solid. Full of gunk. We're going to run wire through that before I put it in the ultrasonic cleaner just to 
make sure it passes. Main jet's up in there with the emulsion tube, which that screwdriver doesn't fit. Where's my other screwdriver? There it is. Let's get this up in there. Perhaps. Don't want to damage the threads in there. It's very small. There we go. There's our emulsion tube with the jet. And there's a bunch of series of holes through the side of it here. Uh, those three are clear. Those four are clear. It's not terrible. It's not... I, I've seen far, far worse. It's not terrible. But it does need to be cleaned. So get the little specialty tea infuser ball dollar store cheap cheap works great in the ultrasonic cleaner for small parts <clears throat> needle well let's get our wire pushed through there first where's the wire there's the wire absolutely clogged would have never run like this. There we go. Got a wire pushed through it anyway. I'm going to hit it with some, just some spray cleaner first. Nothing fancy, just parts store carb cleaner. Just help loosen it up. <laughs> yep. In it goes. And she's ready to go in. So what I'm going to do is I am going to hook the float. You can see it's got some crud on it. I'm just going to hook the float in here. I want to dunk it in the ultrasonic cleaner. This will be submerged. You can just throw it in on top, but it's only going to float on the top of the solution. And it's not going to clear everything so you know what this is a mixture screw here that's an idle set screw or a low speed set i'm not going to mess with this one but this is a mixture screw so look at that screw head it's got two dots that's all it's got i used to have a screwdriver that actually fit that i don't anymore so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this little fine sharpie. I'm going to put a little line on it, just for my own reference. And let's get that turned in. So we're going to check to see what it's currently set at so we can put it back that way when it comes out of the ultrasonic cleaner. So there's half, one turn, one and three quarter turns. That's where it was. I like to pull the mixture screws out to go into the ultrasonic cleaner. That way the solution can get in through that passage and, and clean it as well. It can flow through, so. So not, like I said, not terribly dirty. Just old gas. I get that in there. Oh, let's get that out, pilot jet. <clears throat> I'm not sure how old this machine is. There's not a lot of plastic parts on this carburetor, which is, that would be typical. A pilot jet. <laughs> the pilot jet is obstructed. So it wouldn't have run that, on that fact either. There's a hole through here right through, and there's another one on the end here. The one on the, the through holes is very big. Some junk in there. The one on the end is very small. There's actually three holes through this. And they're all offset. I think that's too big, too big of a wire for that one. Where is the tiny wire? 
this one. Yep, that one fit through. It was plugged up. There's actually junk in the wire now. Yep. That'll be much better now. <laughs> I'm going to hit that with some carb clean too. Just as a initial spray, it'll still go into the ultrasonic cleaner, but it's got some extra help. Okay, into the bath it goes. See you in a few minutes. All right, it's all out of its bath now. It's been blown dry with the compressor. Everything's nice and clean and shiny. Let's get our pilot in there. Just gonna verify with the wire that it's clear. Yep, nice and clear. I say wire, it's actually a guitar string. <laughs> still a wire. It's still a wire. All right, let's get that pilot secured. It's a little awkward with that. Throttle stop screwing the way. Eh, good and snug. All right, what was our uh, mixture screw set at? One and three quarter? I think it was. Sometimes I just grab that pen and write it on the Paper towel. <laughs> I think it was one and three quarter. So we'll just bottom it out lightly. While I was waiting for the ultrasonic cleaner, I there's our reference mark. I cleaned out the uh, fuel tank. Half. One. One and a half. One and three quarters. That's where it was. We can mess with it later if we have to, but I don't think anybody's monkeyed with this yet, so I think it's all good. Let's get our needle on the float. Nope. No liquid in the float. That's a good sign. <gasps> Where's the needle? There's the needle. <clears throat> Sometimes floats crack and then they get full of, full of liquid fuel or whatever and then it makes them not work right because they're heavier than they should and they sink. It's called a sunk float actually. If you want to get technical. I'm going to test it. I'm just going to blow air in here. Right now it should not pass air. When I lift this it should pass air. Yup. Functioning. Get our tube back in there. Not stupid tight, it's brass in aluminum. Just has to be snug. And that's snug. Let's get this back in there. Yup, there's our bowl. Rubber gasket on it. tank's been cleaned it's got a little bit of uh, fresh non-ethanol fuel in it uh, let's adjust the position of that the drain that looks good 10 mil wrench Good and snug. That gasket's still good. This gasket is still good. We're going with it. That's what we're doing. Get just up and over again. Let's give her. Okay, well, let's get our Z band in there. Fuel line out of the way. 
Maybe it'll, no, it will not stay. Are you going to stay? Stay. Let's get our Z bend in there. Get a little governor damper spring in there. Come on. Little tiny spring. Well, it's long, but it's very small diameter. That should be fine. Let's get our curb on the studs here. Slide down, slide, slide. That's good. Our fuel line back on air. That's good. There's a fuel level gauge on the top of this gas tank. In my experience, most of the time, they allow water to get into the tank. So if it's the least bit cracked or not perfect, I silicone the thing, absolutely silicone it shut. Silicone it to the tank and around it. That prevents water from getting in it. Okay, that's on. We're gonna turn the gas on now. Give the chance, give the uh, carburetor float bowl a chance to fill up. Give it a chance to overflow if it's going to. It's better to find that out now before it's running and hot and dripping fuel all over the bench. Got our bolt down here. Nuts. Clean drips. Nice and clean. What I'm going to do is just take a screwdriver and crack that drain loose to make sure I do get a drip out of it. That'll tell me that the float is working. Yep, we got fuel coming out. That, that old fuel was so bad that it's not actually even evaporating off my bench. It's just sitting here. Looks like a puddle of water. It's not evaporating at all. That ain't gonna burn. Let's get that plug out of there. We'll have a look, see at it. Five eighths. <clears throat> Said do whatever it needs. If it needs a tune up, do the tune up. Well, it's old, so it needs a tune up. And Spark plug is part of that tune-up, so we'll end up changing it anyways, likely. Oh yeah, oh yeah. That's gonna get a new one. RC9YC, RC9YC, RC9YC. I didn't have to cross-reference that. First thing I want to see. I'll have to cross-reference it over and uh, figure out what it is it needs. Hold on. All right, sparkplugcrossreference.com says a BCPR5ES will work. That's what I'm putting in it, or the equivalent. Because that's what I got. There we go. That's done. Once it's running and warm, well, once it's running, what we're going to do is check, make sure that our voltage and uh, frequency is correct. Let's get, our, let's get our crankcase tube in there. And we're going to let it run a little bit, warm up, and uh, change oil out. Our crank tube. Okay, choke butterfly works. Throttle works. Let's get our air filter on there. Uh, 
Okay, there we go. I always try and make sure that uh, I get the air cleaner and everything, all that assembly on the unit when I'm doing my testing because sometimes it changes the way it runs. Putting an air cleaner on it will make it run a little richer because there's a restriction in the airflow. Come on. Here we go. Good and on. Let's get our fuel cap back on. Okay, spark plug, that's all good. Recoil is fixed, so it should work for us. Get all the stuff off the bench that's gonna rattle off and end up on the floor. <clears throat> so I'm gonna use this uh, kilowatt meter. It gives you voltage, it gives you uh, frequency and everything. Like I said, we've got oil in it. It's just very dirty. We are going to change it out, but uh, okay. I forget what choke is. Oh, choke. Okay. It should actually fire pretty relatively quick. Let's see what happens. That's our voltage, 114.9. There's our cycles, 60 cycles, 61. Let's put a load on it. Well, I'm gonna put a, uh, a heat gun on it. The heat gun is about the highest thing I've got for, a, for an amp draw. This one I think is 1200 watts, so. So with the load, it dropped down to 60.1, 60.2, that's exactly where you want it to be. That's 1300 watts. Power's off. I'm gonna let it run a little longer to uh, warm that engine up, let the oil heat up and get any junk off the bottom that may have been settled over the years. Customer said, it, I estimated by the smell of the fuel that it was about five, six years old. He said, yeah, it's been about that long since it's ran. So we're gonna change the oil on it. <laughs> she ran out of gas. Yeah, that's exactly what happened. It ran out of gas. <laughs> All right, it's nice and warm now. We'll change that oil out. Well, we know it works. So, all that's left on this is basically throw a drain plug in, fill it up with some uh, fresh oil. And call the customer, tell them it's ready. So, thanks for joining me on this one, guys. Nice little quick fix on this generator. Runs great, actually. I, I really like this thing. My, my own generator is like 7,000 watts. It's ignorant loud. Uh, it runs my welder, but sometimes it's just, it can be too much of a generator. Like, this is perfect to run a light bulb and a, a sump pump if you need to. It's not going to run your whole house, but it'll, you know, keeps your fridge going or a furnace running or something so again thanks for joining me
Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And uh, click that bell icon to notify you when I upload new videos. Until the next one, take care.